I've learned to appreciate the quiet in the cold. It's just not something you get in any other place and in any other season. We're the loudest things out there coming along on our snowmobiles. Thinking about rare species, they're such an important part of the landscape and something that we work so hard to preserve. And that's always what's driven me. That's, that's where I want to make the most difference. Because I've worked with threatened and endangered species for most of my career, I'm used to not seeing what I study. A lynx is a, a very snow adapted cat and we actually, we don't know how many they are. We pick up scat or hair, and then from the scatter hair, you get genetic information, and you can identify a species or an individual. With using camera traps, you don't always get the perfect picture, and it's often hard to tell if, if that's a lynx or a bobcat. So we try and use track surveys and cover more of the areas that the animals actually inhabit. Even experts misidentify tracks. When tracks melt out, they're hard to identify. We make mistakes, we're human. I have definitely always had an affinity for uh, river systems and really anything aquatic. So when I learned about tools like environmental DNA, it was mind-blowing that I can then just go out, collect a water sample, and tell you what species were upstream. So environmental DNA in its truest form is DNA that is shed from a species into the environment. So that DNA could be cells from skin, from hair, from feces, from urine, anything that is then shed from that animal and into the environment. Here at the Genomics Center, we've analyzed over 10,000 samples for 80 different species and are really working to make that tool available for anyone across the world. So this all came from a collaborative meeting with geneticists, with carnivore researchers, with the eDNA program, and we were all kind of talking about uh, plans for winter sampling, how uh, the lynx crew was going to be doing their field work, and then kind of as a group kind of came to this moment of like, huh, well snow tracks are basically just water samples if we melt them out. There should be no reason that that shouldn't work just as we treat a normal stream sample. It's been through a lot of conversations and working with Tommy. And then one day we just decided, let's, let's see what happens when we scoop snow. Right? Let's test this. It was one of those moments where you come back into lab, you plug in the results, you're waiting for it to load, and all of a sudden they pop up on the screen and it's one of those eureka moments. We can detect DNA from snow tracks. Like, that alone in itself is crazy. It's really exciting to see all of the success that eDNA has had with detecting rare species in streams and to bring that onto land. There's no question, you know, we, we find a lynx and it is a lynx and, and we don't have to focus our efforts on that. We can instead focus on these broader conservation questions. I think that we're not, we're not going to be able to do conservation without collaboration. We're providing people with good science-based information and letting them make more informed decisions for conservation. And I think there's nothing, there's nothing greater than that. So I have never seen a lynx. <laughs> Who knows if I ever will. But with eDNA, like, I don't have to see it to know it's there. And that is truly remarkable about this technology. By detecting a single cell of DNA on an entire landscape, we can effectively influence how over 5 million acres of land are managed.